We have seriously been waiting in the car for you for 20 minutes. You know, sometimes spending time with my tools can put a strain on my most important relationships. That brings us to this video today. Mother's Day is right around the corner and unlike most guys, I really haven't done anything to prepare. But we're gonna save the day by building a planter box she's gonna love with all these tools. This box can be built in many sizes. I've measured the target location and I'm gonna build mine 10 inches wide, 28 inches long, and right around a foot tall. Now to build this, I'm gonna have a frame made out of some one and a half inch angle iron and then the side there will be panels out of this galvanized corrugated roofing panel that will just give it a nice textured look. So the first thing I need to do is cut a rectangle out that's the dimensions of my planter box. And I'm gonna do this with mitered corners. I'll lay them out here on my bench and these cuts just fit together really nice. I'll tack weld it together on the inside, putting three tacks at each corner, which will hold things nice and secure. Now that I've done that, I need to work on my legs, the corners of this frame. I'll set each of these pieces on the corner and make sure everything's looking right. And I need to position it so that it's square in two directions. For one direction, I'm going to use this switchable magnetic square. I really like these to hold things in place. And then the other direction, I'll just line it up with a speed square. The problem here is there's a fillet radius down inside the angle iron, so I can't fit it up tight. I could just eyeball it, but a good tool to have around is just a cheap speed square that you cut the inside corner off for things like this. Once those are lined up square, once again, I'm just putting three tacks in place to hold them securely until I get the rest of the frame built. So this project's coming together really well. I'm gonna flip it over the way that it'll sit. And now I just need to cut four more lengths that are gonna sit right above the bottom here to close in this frame. I'm gonna do that just in the same way, measuring them out, and while I do, I'll just give a shout out to my buddy Brad, who I got this idea from after seeing a few of these that he built a few years back. I'm just using some scraps of two inch square tubing to space out the height of this bottom rail, because that's an easy way to do it. And once I have it in there, I'm placing a few tack welds, and I should be ready to weld this out. Now I'm welding this whole thing out using the MIG welding process, but you could build this with stick welding or you could TIG weld it if you took a little bit of time to clean off this mill scale. In fact, MIG welding, it would be better to have cleaned the mill scale off to get a sound weld, but the structural requirements of this are really low, so it should be just fine MIG welded right over that mill scale. Now because I want a nice smooth appearance on this, I'm gonna grind down any face reinforcement that I have from these welds till I get a nice smooth frame. I need a way to keep the dirt from falling through the bottom, but I want to allow some water to drain through. I could use a variety of things. I could use some sheet metal. I could even probably use some wood and drill some holes in it, but I have a scrap of expanded metal laying around here. I'm just gonna tack weld that in place. So I cut it to size and then set it here on the bottom. And you'll notice as I'm welding, I'm working from the center out. Anytime you're welding in any kind of sheet metal to a more rigid structure, working from the center outwards keeps you from getting a bow in the material at the end of the day. Now you could leave this frame just natural or grind it down and let it rust, but I'm gonna paint mine flat black because I think that'll have a really unique contrast with those galvanized panels. After getting a few coats of paint on here, I need to cut my panels to size. I'm just using a circular saw with the right blade on there, but you could also use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel or even just some snips. Now that the panels are cut to size, I can set them in place. I'm not gonna do anything to fasten them in there. I'm just gonna rely on the dirt and rocks that I put inside to hold them in place. That way I'll be able to scoop everything out and replace these panels in the future if I need to. Good. 
Now, I'd like to surprise her. We still have a few days till Mother's Day, but it's not gonna happen because you know what? She edits these videos, so she's gonna see all this. So let's just see what she thinks about it now. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.